wrap away. Welcome back. Today, we have a very special guest by the name of S. Elegance. How Hello. are you, Sean? Nah, I'm all right. How are you? Now, to the people that don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself and tell us all about you? Hello, my name is S. Elegance. S. Elegance, that's me. And I'm an artist from Leeds. I sing, rap and dance. And I've been doing music for the past, I'd say, coming on to five years this um, year, 2021. I started in 2016 by the moniker of Greasy. Now I switched the moniker. Now my name is S. Elegance. And yeah, this is me. And yeah. <laughs> so you've been doing it for a very, very long time, I can guess. Yeah. Now, I just want to know what the journey was like for you to get to this point. <sighs> the journey has been... With music, the journey has been like it's been funny because it's been a roller coaster. Do you get know what I'm saying? Loads of trials and tribulations with music. Do you get know what I'm saying? And starting at the young age of twelve, you think that all oh, music's gonna be easy. You think that music's gonna be like a smooth sailing. But the more you get into it, the more you understand the industry, the more you understand everything, it becomes like it's a journey. There's so many things that go wrong, but at the same time, there's so many things that go right. Do you know what I'm saying? So the yeah. best way I could describe this journey, this like thing that I'm going through is literally a roller coaster ride. Do you know what I'm saying? You never know what's gonna happen. And I love it because it keeps me on my toes, it keeps me motivated, it keeps me determined for what I want. And that is music, do you get? It? And for the past five years, it's just kept me, you know, knowing that okay, this is what I want. Music is my passion, music is what I love. That's what it's taught me since the young age of twelve. Now, I'm surpri- actually really surprised you started at the age of 12. And yeah. for some for some people who listen to this and are starting to get into music, and they just started, and some people get unmotivated. Some people start it for like a year or two and then say, oh, this might not be for me. So what, yeah. in, in those years of your journey, if mm-hmm. you got to that point, what would you say to yourself to motivate you back? Basically, I've had moments like that. Many, many moments like that where the motivation is not there. I want to tell you a bit, a bit of a story. Like, when I was, I think, 13, I had so much hate and I didn't know how to fathom hate because it's a new thing. So when I was 13, I was just like, oh, let me take a break from music. And I kid you not, that was the best time of my life. It got me to allow, allowed me to understand, okay, cool, let me look at other avenues. Not to say that, oh, I don't like music, but let me relax, breathe. You know what I'm saying? Let me just, you know, yeah. get myself calm. And then that's when I returned as a celebrant. So those that feel unmotivated, the thing is when people feel unmotivated it's because of external validation, if you know what I'm saying? Other people have said, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. So people get disheartened, you get? And that's what happened to me. But what I had to realize is in that time, I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing music to satisfy myself. And obviously if people like it, then people like it. But if people don't, okay, nice. But in order to keep motivated, then breaks are really good. Don't look at social media like that because social media is so detrimental because obviously you find yourself comparing yourself to someone who is, you know, already up there. You see, you've got to enjoy the process. That's the way I think of it. Yeah, it's not about oh, looking at getting to the top straight away. It's about enjoying the process. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about saying, okay, cool. Let me enjoy every single moment in music. Let me enjoy even the trials and tribulations. And that's what makes you know. When you said about taking a break, right? I'll tune into your podcast, which I actually genuinely quite like. Now, for some people, when they start getting into music, they don't understand that the more you overwork yourself, the less motivated you'll get, basically, and you'll feel like you're forced to do it. So, for you taking that break when you were 13, right? And now, to you taking another break and doing the podcast on the side, is is that? what you're doing currently just taking a break taking a breather recollecting yourself yeah thing is what people think of music is they think it's a char do you know what I'm saying and that's where people go wrong with it do you know what I mean like with myself right now COVID has really you know halted a lot of things especially for myself like I had so many things that I planned to release but COVID stopped that COVID said I, you're not releasing nothing do you know what I'm saying and yeah, it's yeah. Due, I don't want to, you know, blame things, but right about now, I'll discuss right about now, it's a transitional period for myself, do you get? And the best way to transition into something is you want to take a break, you've got to stop yourself, because if you keep thinking that music's a child, you're going to lose the enjoyment for it, 
Do you get like with the whole situation with COVID, etc., etc., it's been hard for a lot of upcoming artists. Do you get what I'm saying? Especially for myself. And with the breaks, it allows me to re cleanse and really, you know, meditate on every idea that I have. Because people think, do you know, when you have a break, people think you're just having a break to be lazy. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? They yeah, think that nah, you're having nah. a break to just chill and, you know, not do anything. No, you have a break to really get your mind in gear and be like, okay, cool. Yeah, let me figure out how I can improve. That's the break for me. It's not to say I quit music because I love music. Music is probably the only thing I love to that extent. And even back when I was 13, the reason why I took a break is because of another reason. I couldn't fathom the hate. So I had to look at another avenue and I, I started playing football again. And that was the best, one of the best things I did because that allowed me to mature into S elegance. Because I think if I did not take that football break, perhaps I wouldn't be back in such, in this, you know, Monica S elegance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, now you talk about COVID, but I'm, I've seen your Instagram post. I've I've, yeah. I've seen you keep it fit on Snapchat, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want you to tell the people what to do in COVID when you're locking down. What to yeah. do as a workout, what to do mentally, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My best advice is with COVID, let's say with me, the way I look at COVID is it's a mindset. Do you get what I'm saying? So when I'm on social media, just enjoy yourself. People are too serious, do you get what I'm saying? People are taking this so like with myself. The only thing on social media I want to post is positivity. Enjoying myself, having a laugh, entertaining people. Do you get it? And people get so put in a low vibration about this whole COVID situation that they forget to just enjoy life, smile. What's wrong with smiling, do you get it? So like when they're in lockdown, when they're doing, use that time to create, use that time to um, look at what you can improve on because you always have the moments where you can improve, do you get it? That's what COVID was for me. And perhaps that might be taking breaks on social media because we all know social media is a facade. People post, you know, things for other people's validation, etc. cetera, so people, act like they're balling on social media people act like they've got money when they really don't so the best way if i was to give some advice on it is either take a break or just post positivity and not care because that's when you'll be happy do you get it? <laughs> yeah i get it now i'm just gonna take it back for a minute the thing is the first time i properly met you was at ls6 cafe do you remember that yeah day? yeah yeah Constantly yeah that's good. life performance oh. Yeah, I want you to tell me how what feeling you got after that performance. All those people who came and supported you, what was you feeling after that? Uh, 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, like... Because I started performing it when I was 13. And it was a good performance when I was 13, right? But when I did it at LS6 Cafe, I felt overwhelmed because I was like, I'm not trying to say I did it by myself but all the things like rebranding as elegance I didn't expect it you know when I do a live performance so people to show so much love do you get what I'm saying because during your social media let's say you get 1k views you don't realise how much 1000 views is you know because that means at least 1000 people have seen you do you get it so what LS6 is taught me that cherish every single fan because when I was at LS6 and I seen every single person there and I was like they're all here to support the young generation, including not even just me, Agony, uh, Fabien, Cole, all the people that was there really to see all the love, all the support. I was there like, this is what music's about. It made me feel like, it made me feel real happy because after people was like, oh my God, you can perform, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, you don't see that on a social media behind the screen, but when you see it in real life, it's a whole different experience do you know what I'm saying now, for, yeah for the people who don't know how lit that concert was let me tell you the we was on the second floor right you remember yeah. this we was on the second floor and yeah. tell the audience why we have to move downstairs oh because those making those too much noise like I remember on the first floor it was so loud that people told us to move downstairs because there's hella bouncing and everything from like David Jens all the artists I think there's hella more artists for KB there was so much noise there was such an atmosphere that everyone had to move downstairs well yeah now <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah it is about to think about but in the future when this COVID thing is all done what are your plans what are you trying to get to 
that are my plans. I've got so many plans and it's just a case of like, number one, I want to release all the music that I've been sitting on. Do you know what I'm saying? That's number one. I want to show people how I've transitioned because I always think I can improve. There's never a moment in music that I think, oh, I'm doing so well, blah, blah, let me rest on my rock laurels. Now with music, I'm always like, what's next? So people haven't heard the newest sound of myself, the matured version of S Elegance, the newest stage, because I'm always trying to rebuild and rebrand myself. So my big number one plan is release music and music videos be consistent. That's number one. Do you get? Number two, show people the new side of me. Do you get? Show people what I've been working on because people might be thinking, oh, he's not doing anything. But hopefully I show and hopefully people will like and think, ooh, so this is what he's been doing. Oh, I didn't know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what I'm saying. So that's my plan. And get some live performances as soon as, oh, that's the one thing I miss the most as well. Get some live performances and see what happens after that. Hopefully I get, you know, eyes. Hopefully record labels look at me. Hopefully artists look at me. We don't know, you know what I'm saying? But my main plans is release all the things I've been sitting on and also show people the new side of me. Did you get it? Yeah, now, when you say release all the music you've been sitting on, give us an idea of how many songs or how late those songs are right now that you're sitting on, waiting to release it. I've got a bundle of songs. Say that again, sorry. Say the question again, sorry. All right, so I was saying, you were saying that you were, you're you sitting on some songs, right? You're yeah. waiting to release it. Now, yeah. I just want to know, or just give me an estimate of how many songs there is, or the vibe yeah. of that song, what you're trying to the new you yeah. is. All right, so right now, I've wrote, I think, like 60 songs. I've recorded like 10. And... People think, do you know when you're not releasing, people think that you're not working. Music's a hustle. You work, work, work. Do you get it? Same time enjoy, but it's work. And the vibe of the song is number one. The one thing I want to stop doing personally is because I've got a foul mouth. Well, I used to have a foul mouth, but I used to swear in every single tune. Like every, and I'm not saying it's bad to shout out all my guys that do music and use profanity because sometimes that's their style. Now with me, I've noticed I've got a lot of younger people that listen to my music. Do you understand? A lot of kids that look up to me in a sense of like, ooh, what I do, they might, Im- they might imitate, including my little brother. Do you get it? My little brother, he's nine. So I wanted to make music, not necessarily for kids, that everyone can listen to. Do you get it? So the vibe of the songs is like, oh, okay. Of course I'm talking about ladies. I love my ladies. I'm talking about hustling i'm talking about i'm covering all aspects but mainly ladies you get what i'm saying and the one thing i've done if you've noticed is i don't swear so yeah i'm trying to keep it clean i'm trying to keep it artistic and you know show people that hey you can still make art and not swear you get what i'm saying yeah i totally get it and um you now we've cleared this you you've got a podcast by your own you do it on instagram if i'm not mistaken now yeah. On that podcast, are you trying to make that podcast into um, a thing in the future where you can develop it, or is it just for now? Mm-hmm. Or thing is, with the podcast, it? yeah, with the podcast, it's kind of weird because I didn't really expect people to really be like, wow, that's information. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I, I just started on Snapchat private story. I just said, you know what? I'm bored. Let me just give some people advice on what I need to do. And or what they need to do even and you'd have some people watching vicariously then you'd have others being like wow this is top-notch advice so i just said okay let me just see how it goes and then people are like wow you should start this now my main thing is with the podcast right i do it with le- just out of leisure do you get it? i don't do it to say, oh, i need to do no 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 music is number one now of the podcasts maybe in the future maybe after music has taken off Never know, we might come back and be like, okay, cool, to add a unique selling point for myself to add something that brands their elegance as well. Because in the podcast, I cover things like uh, how to deal with calm, <laughs> motivation, yeah. advice. I do quite a lot of things, you know what I'm saying, which is quite beneficial to other people. Like, anyone can do it, you know what I'm saying? But for now, I just do it as, I wouldn't say fun, but I don't take it too serious. It's just something to do when I'm not doing music. Because after music, people have got to realise in 24 hours in a day I'm not saying music's a small part of it but there's so much more you can do 
So why not me? I wanna, you know, cast my net. Why not do this? Why not do that? Why not do this? So people can look at us elegance and think, mm. see, you know, excess tentacion. I know I might be yeah, going yeah. on. You know, excess tentacion. Yeah, yeah. Tupac. Why are these people so legendary? You know what I'm saying because they had such an impact on the youth, on whatever they was doing. There was such an impact. There was something that stated their legacy. That's what I'm trying to do. So if them podcasts, that podcasts can help assist that, why not? That's my mentality right now. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you're saying with the uh, yeah the artists, yeah. But now music, I, I feel, I feel like with a podcast you can get a lot of information now because you're talking to your phone, you're talking to yourself, you mm-hmm. know? you're talking what's on your mind. But with music, I feel like people don't realize that music is also another way of telling the youth of what to do or what not to do mm. and some people i wouldn't say glorify but they talk about you know mm. killing people drugs stuff mm. like that way too many mm. times not realizing when you're releasing music people listen to it over and over and over again right? and it and they might get to their head so with music what do you feel like is it, it, it is pretty much like a sensitive thing to do because some people i've talked to Sengi. And he said, in the studio, some people, when they rap about, you know, how they trap, how they, you know, might just shout someone, that's their way of getting the, out of their anger. That's built up inside them. And then when they get to the studio, they can release it all in, the, in their songs. So what do you think about that? Like, Well, in terms of like, because with music, right, the one thing I've learned about it is music is about feeling. So when you listen to something, you feel some sort of way. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, same thing as the creator, same same thing as the producer of that music, they feel some sort of way. So when people incite violence, etc., etc., you see, I used to frown upon it. Do you get it? I used to think, oh, why are you doing this? But I had to study, I had to think, okay, why? Now, for some people, that may be the life they live. That may be the way they're going to get out of the life they live. You get what I'm saying? For some people, rapping about drugs, rapping about, that may be the way. I'm not saying, I'm not, promoting it but I have compassion and understand that may be the way for them to finally see some success do you know what I'm saying because obviously I understand that people are easily influenced when people listen to something they might go out and do something but do you know when someone creates music's an act music's a performance it's like Shakespeare it's an act yeah the world is a stage you just got to know how to act and with music a lot of people when they're talking about drugs and that they're not really you know saying that they're out here killing 100 people. You know what I'm saying? They're just yeah. doing it in order to get what, where they need to be. So right about now, I don't really frown upon it. I understand why, but I personally wouldn't do it. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah. I understand that with music, like S. Elegance is a character. Do you get it? S. Elegance is a persona. Sean is a different person. S. Elegance is a, that's a persona. Do you get it? S. Elegance, the guy, the ladies man, the guy, that, that's a persona. Sean is personal, that's me and you. That's, uh, you know, exactly. Now, when people talk about drugs and that, I like to look at that and think, okay, I have to listen to that and think that's a persona. As long as it's unique, as long as I can vibe to it, as long as I can think, okay, cool, I don't see a problem. It's only a problem when you when you actually say, I do this and you don't do that. You get it? But when people say, oh, yeah. this is my character, this is me, that's it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I, what I, I believe about the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But me personally, I wouldn't do that. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather do something which is true to myself because it'll be easier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope I elaborate. Yeah. I hope I said that eloquently. <laughs> nah, it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah. But like from this interview, what I'm getting is that. Ev- All right, I'll start from when I first met you on the studio yeah. with Agony, making that song. Yeah. Right. To now. I can clearly see that you have transitioned to a, a whole new, better person, whole new level. So <laughs> I'm you, asking you now, do you, when, when you're at home, do you meditate? Do you look after yourself? I, I know you look after yourself health-wise, like working out, getting fit, yeah. nice healthy diet. But yeah. when it comes to mental things, what do you do to keep it healthy and keep it active? With my mental side, yeah. I, I do mindfulness meditation. Do you get what I'm saying? So I try to meditate. I try to meditate every single day. You know what I'm saying? I try. <laughs> or I read. I read and I do Muay Thai. 
which is a special form of mixed martial arts. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, all of yeah. this is mental. Like people say, of oh, MMAs, it's a lot of mental. So we, so the way I take care of myself is I look at self improvement videos. Number one, I meditate. I take breaks off social media like a lot, and I go out for random walks. Do you get what I'm saying? And when I'm yeah. out, I say hi to people. <laughs> Little things like that. Do you get what I'm saying? Like obviously, me, I'm an extroverted person. I like speaking. When I go out, I say hi to people. I smile, I meditate, I do these things to make sure my mind's right. You get it? Because your mind is just as powerful as your physical. So as well as taking care of my body, I take care of my mind, I meditate, I do this and do that. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I meditate, uh, read, that's really good. Watch self-improvement videos, self-improvement content. And just take walks, go out, say hi to people, speak, communicate. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, now, I, when you said what well, I kind of talk about here, because I'm tired myself, I've, pra- I've, yeah. I've practiced it a lot, right? Now, yeah. I've seen, I've seen that you've met a very, very famous person called Mark oh, yeah. Casey, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like, meeting a person of that, that caliber? Uh, it was amazing, because it wasn't even planned. I remember I went to Muay Thai with my big brother uh, in August. And I was training. Jab, jab, ah, oh, no, yeah, I just trained and do my thing. And then I see this red haired guy. And I was like, no, bro, he talked to me, he goes, do you not see UFC fight? My, yeah, cause I was like, so randomly in a gym, no one really, because everyone was just doing their own thing in the thing. Everyone was just doing their pads. So I just said, is that really him? So obviously, I just came to him, are you Matt Diacassi? He goes, yeah, yeah, he was just fine, like a normal, just doing his thing. And I just spoke to him, I said, okay, cool. Teach me how to do this, et cetera, et cetera. And, he, and then he was telling me about his, how he turned into a fighter, how he did things, you get it? And with myself, I like being like a sponge. I like taking information in from other people. So he was talking about, okay, how he became a UFC fighter through due diligence, through working hard, through doing all the things they need to do, through being idiosyncratic in the case of he did things differently, whilst other people was, you know, sleeping he would be in the gym he'd be working out even when i mean looking at his instagram he's always working and i told them i said wow he even taught me how to kick do you get what i'm saying because yeah. when i was first did muay thai i was poor i was awful but he taught me the pivot he taught me everything and it wasn't a case of okay i want to be a ufc fighter now i took a lesson from him do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i know it's like okay, cool he is an expert in his field. So when he was telling me his background story, I was using that to think, okay, how can I input that into music? Then it was just chopping it up. It was just like, oh, okay, what do you want to do? I said, oh, I'm a musician, etc., etc." I didn't want to talk about myself too much. And he was telling me, okay, how he made it as a UFC fighter. And we just, it was just vibes. And then we exchanged social medias. And yeah, it was just really good. It was really, it was a really good experience. Now, talking about, I know for a fact that when you're, when you're fighting in a cage or in a ring or whatever, people mm. don't get is that it is basically 90% mental and 10% oh, physical. Because if mm-hmm. you can't outsmart your opponent, then mm-hmm. you will get knocked out. I look at that lesson and I see a lot of people do it in music as well. It's a lot on the mental side and not on the actually lyrics. And you know, I've got to do this and that. Beats got to be right. Mm-hmm. So from what he told you, what kind of lessons do you think that applies to music oh with music you've got to be prepared to let's use metaphors right music does rounds you get like an MMA does rounds some rounds are good some rounds are bad you get now what I can use from this is with MMA with fighting etc etc sometimes your opponent's going to be on top you win you lose with music you win and you lose Music, because people think music's like this. Nope. It's like a fight against yourself, though. You're not against someone. It's a fight against you. Because in MMA, you're trying to outsmart the opponent. But in music, you're trying to outsmart yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you going to prevail when your mind says, okay, I can't do this? Are you going to go to the studio? Are you going to meet that girl? Are you going to, you know, <laughs> are you going to write <laughs> lyrics? Or are you going to sit down and watch Netflix? With music, it's a battle against yourself. 
you get what I'm saying? It's uh, yeah. that's that's what it is. It's literally you against you, and people forget that music. I don't compare myself to no one because the way I think of it is, nobody is like a seller Gans. That's the way I think of it. Not to sound like oh, I'm big headed, but the whole thing I'm trying to engineer is that no one can you know sound or be exactly like me. So it's not a battle against them. It's a battle against yourself. You get what I'm saying? It's a battle against yeah. to see. Okay, cool. Can I? overcome temptations and right? instead of going to that party why not do an all night session why not do this and same with your training this is training this is boot camp for me this is boot camp for when I do because a lot of artists when they get to the top they lack discipline and then they fall straight back down yeah. so music is a battle against yourself but with like fighting you can use the instance of okay cool you're doing rounds against someone else you get take the same sort of thing and use it to your advantage you get it instead of fighting against someone else you're fighting against yourself do you know what I'm saying yeah right and I'll use metaphors again right <laughs> yeah, so yeah, when, yeah 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 because I love this when when you're fighting I, sit, I can yeah. oh, I can make links to music and everything but some people right mm. you I, I trust you've seen a lot of USC fights just casually watching it right and some some people oh they throw some jabs some nice connects you know they've won two out of three rounds right the third round they just gotta put in the bag they've got it and they get knocked out yeah. i see that as someone who is slowly grinding to music right he's getting there sure people see people notice him but now on the way he just stops and he just goes straight down and people with music when people forget you they're just gonna forget you until someone oh remember that guy with that song <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Where, where's he gone oh i don't know bro and then there's some people who they might have grounded, grounded for like 15 years. And then that one song just rocket them up. Like I'll, I'll give an example like Lil Nas, right? Yeah. He, he made one song, you know, the... Uh, the oh, Old Town the Road. Name? Yeah, Old that's Town the Old Town Road. Road. And look at his views now. He's kept it up there. Right, yeah. So, you know, like people don't think about this stuff, but I... I, no? I could, for your age, bro, you are like... I can, I can <laughs> tell you now, you are, you are something you. else, bro. Yeah. Nah, thank you, like... Oh, thank you, like, literally. People don't see the behind the scenes of music, like you're saying. There's a story, I always, you know, research music. You know, before Lil Nas X did Old Town Road, he got kicked out of his house, right? Mm. And with the last £30 he got, shout out to him, $30, shout out to him. He used that to buy an instrumental for Old Town Road, then what happened? <laughs> yeah, like, literally, yeah. you couldn't stop hearing about it. And it got the most Grammy National, Gra- Grammy Awards, etc., etc., nominations. And I was just thinking, that inspired me. Because I was like, yo, with the last 30 shekels he had, he contributed that towards music. Mm. And that's inspiring. And it comes back to that thing I was talking about, okay? He could have said, okay, cool. Let me spend that 30 pound on, I don't know, let me go out to a party. <laughs> nah, let me contribute that. <laughs> yeah, let yeah. me contribute that. The one thing I love the most. And it comes back to that thing, he won the battle against himself. And now he's reaping the benefits of that hard hustle of getting kicked out of all them trials and tribulations. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, with stories like that, where they come mm-hmm. from nothing to, to like up to the top, people don't get, it's not about luck or anything it's not like oh he's lucky I've done the same things but he just got lucky no it's about you giving yourself your, giving yourself a chance and then that chance might have to pay off in the future exactly like some, um, yeah. exactly yeah, and some people are just like I don't know and like, they look at these inspirit like Bill Gates for example everyone looks up at him rich person mm. right but the thing is you only see him when he's rich you don't have see you the trial and tribulations yeah, exactly. Like, you don't he see him when sleep. he's busy at work, sleepless nights, right? Now, when it comes to that, I think artists don't really, like, like you said, it's, it is a chore, right? But when you get the motivation to say to yourself, oh, I need a break because I deserve it. I'm not, I need a break because I can. Like, yeah. there's nothing stopping me from ending this meeting yet and go to sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah nothing yeah, stopping yeah. me from sure. doing that, right? For sure. Yeah, so, like, that, that motivation, I think a lot of people, 
uh, uh, some people I'll say that miss it. All right, so all right, so I'll say this because we are coming to an end. So yeah. I want you to tell to your fans who are just starting music or you get into something like MMA, fitness. Yeah. They might they might be unmotivated right now. Yeah. So I want you to tell them what you did, what worked for you, what didn't, yeah. and then we'll wrap it from there. Alright, uh, cool. With becoming motivation, with trying to get motivated, with trying to really, you know, come into something and say, okay, this is what I want. You've got to realize why you're doing it. Did you get? It? You can't do it because of over so that other people will like you. Because number one, with whatever craft you do, people are going to dislike you. Did you get? It? That's the number one thing I wish I would have taught myself. Like when I was like twelve, those youngins that are watching this. Of course, I'm still young. I'm seventeen. But I wish I learned earlier that those people that dislike you, let them. Because when you are at the top. When you're reaping all the benefits, they're gonna be like, "Oh, do you remember me? Do you remember me? Do you remember me?" Do you remember me? Do you remember me? No, you know what I'm saying? Because what people want to understand is, whilst you are in the come up, they don't want to hear about you. They want to hear about you when you're up there. That's why people don't understand the behind the scenes of hustling, the trials and tribulations. Like with me, I'm not gonna to talk too much, but for the past year, it's been a hustle. Now I'm saying that people don't see, you know, with, let's say I'm not released in like I think nine months now, people think that because I'm being lazy. They don't see the behind the scenes to music. They don't see the sleepless nights, the crying, the everything. So how many times I've cried over music? So you got to ask them, are you ready to cry over what you're doing? Are you ready to, for people to say I don't like you? Are you ready for people saying that you should quit? You know what I'm saying? And another thing, you can't do it. You have to be unique. Can people look at you and say, okay, there's no one like you? You get it? In whatever you do, let's say, for instance, Conor McGregor in MMA, his energy, the reason why he's so branded in UFC, the reason why he's one of the best fighters of all time is because he has this unique sense about him. Do you know what I'm saying? He's got this aura, he's got this, and even the way he fights, it's, it's just ridiculous. And he's one of the people I look up to in terms of, you know, this path that I'm taking. Are you ready to be different? Because being different, people are going to look at you and think, he's doing too much. People look at me and say, he's got too much energy. And I think, okay, but what are you doing? People are always going to hate and sit vicariously and be, da, 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 talk on your name. But other people, right? They're going to look at you and think, well done. They're going to be overzealous about you. They're going to be like, okay, cool. Well done. And you've got to, always appreciate the people that love you and and you know have compassion for the people that hate you because the, they only hate because they can't see themselves doing what you put your mind to do you get it because i've put my mind like i've got a dream all over here i hit the waffle but i've got my dream all over here i, I can i can see i'm can saying see. and i've said to myself i will manifest all of that by the way it's just going to happen and people will look at this dream and think that ain't gonna happen because they don't see themselves doing it. So for all them people that really feel down, feel unmotivated, you've got to ask yourself, all right, cool. Who am I doing it for? Because if you're trying to do it for external validation, you've lost. But if you're trying to do it in order to fulfillment, to satisfy yourself and live a fulfilling life, do it. Because I understand that people, even people that are looking at this, they're gonna think, oh, it does too much. He ain't gonna make it. But you only know you you know you best you know okay cool this is what i can do no one can tell me nothing can nobody tell me no no one can tell you nothing you get it? so for those that feel down demotivated just literally think okay cool this is for me whoever's in is in whoever's out is out but either way i'm doing what i need to do in order to do it and that's the mindset that's kept me going for so long and hopefully in the next few years, it's all manifest. <laughs> yeah, bye bye if I want forward, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Well, Sean, thank you so much for coming, man. I'm sure you've reached a lot of people for this interview. And um, <laughs> I hope yeah, so. I hope you're the best and hopefully we'll be another one in the future. Thank you so much. I'd like to, big massive shout out to Rap Aware, shout out to, make sure you subscribe to these guys, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you subscribe to Rap Aware. Aware. 
on YouTube and everything. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Stay tuned for new music. You're another dope, but thank you. All right. Well, um, thank you to everyone who's watching. I'll see you later. See you as well, Sean. Yeah.